Let me guess, you found a mob spawner and you're about to set up a mob farm. Wait, 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 maybe you already have a mob farm, but you realize that you suffer from depression every time you go into that small little uninspired room of cobblestone and death. Well, fear not my friend, because today we are going to explore some of the ways that you can transform that drab little room into an epic build. I don't know about you, but I'm like always super excited to find a mob spawner, especially early game, but quite frankly, anytime I'm excited to find a mob spawner, even if I don't particularly need one. Oh, where did he come from? Oh, I have no words. Sometimes it might make sense to just make a quick and easy farm to get whatever it is you need. But I also think it's really smart to make your farms more productive. For example, if you're sitting here grinding away at the spawner, it only makes sense to have an enchantment table there so that you can enchant your gear and refill your levels all at once. If nothing else, it saves you time having to run back and forth. Mmm, cake. In fact, this one is so close to the kill chamber that you don't even have to take a step to use it. Another way that you can take your XP farm to the next level is by adding some villagers to it. I'm not saying setting up an entire villager trading hall. I mean, you could, I guess, if you wanted to. But really, I'm talking more along the lines of adding villagers that maybe have trades that pertain to the exact spawner that you found. So, for example, if you've got a zombie spawner, it would be a great addition to add a cleric villager so that you can trade some of that rotten flesh and earn some emeralds from it. I mean, it certainly beats the alternative that you can do with rotten flesh. Oh, that's nasty. You'd also have easy access to Lapis if you need it for the enchantment table. And you could even set up another wart farm so you could add additional emeralds while you're there. If you had a spider farm, then you could use either a Fletcher or a Fisherman and do string trades for emeralds. Now, my personal favorite farm, as you may be able to tell, is a skeleton farm. And as luck would have it, there are no villagers that trade any sorts of bones or bone meal for emeralds. However, I've got a very creative solution for that, which I will cover a little later in the video. But for now, I actually want to work on the interior of the skeleton farm just a little bit more. I still have a lot of work to do on the villager level, but I'm also really itching to dig out the level above it and start figuring out what we're going to do there. I do have one key piece of advice for you if you do plan to incorporate villagers into your build. Make sure that you keep everything well lit as you go along or things can go very, very wrong, very quickly. Well, that's not good. Why on earth is there a zombie down here? Swings and misses. <gasps> oh my gosh. Oh, I hate these little twerps. Oh, this is bad. This is very, very bad. What am I aiming at? Have they got the villagers? Oh, please. No, don't kill me. Oh, and don't kill the villager. Don't kill the zombie villager. Get the little guys. Come on. Oh, I hate those things. Oh, what am I gonna do? This is not good. Oh my gosh, okay. Relax. Okay, one down. Come on, little twerp. All right, two down. One more. Whew. Oh my gosh, all right, I got this. Everybody follow me. Come on, chainmail. Nobody said anything about formal attire. Everybody follow me, single file line. No pushing. Ooh, oh, you two. Oh, they've all been infected. Seriously, thank goodness for the fencing there so I can have a minute to collect my thoughts and make some boats because boats fix everything. Oh my gosh, there's more. There's more zombies. Are you kidding me? And this is exactly why it takes me so long to get anything done. Finish him! Ugh, dude, you're getting super annoying. Finally. Blue splash. An apple a day, fellas. Feel better. Well done. Okay, now that that mess is cleaned up, let's get back to designing a little bit so we can get back to more tips for your XP farm. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try doing three archways up there and I'll have the middle one a little bit more prominent and then I think what I'm gonna do is do armor stands on display. So it's gonna be more style than it is function. If I'm being honest, I kinda went into this on a wing and a prayer and I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing but I figured I'll just start laying down some blocks and seeing how it looks, and I will tweak it from there. All right, not gonna lie, I kinda like where this is going. 
on the server we have a mod i can't remember the exact name of it but it's like a statue mod where if you put a mob head on a slab then it gives you a statue of that mob so i did that with the drowned and i really like it so i'm probably going to do those on either side and have a set of nice armor in the middle once i manage to get a skeleton head then more than likely i will switch it out for that Okay, I have a short attention span. That's enough design work for now. Another great thing you can do is to explore the area around your XP farm and see if there's anything else that you can take advantage of. For example, I found this geode right next to the skeleton spawner. So there's another easy resource that I can stock up on while I'm down here. It's also a good idea to take a look around and see if there happens to be any other mob spawners. Even if it's not one that will activate when you're down in the farm, it's pretty cool and rather convenient to have access to another farm like that from one central location. So what if you're not that lucky and you don't have any natural resources like that close to your main XP farm? Well, follow me. I've got a solution for that. All right, let's look at some ideas that you can use for the skeleton spawner. Starting with, of course, the storage. I highly recommend you do an automated storage system just to keep everything organized. We've got tons of bones, which are gonna be put to really good use in a minute, I'll show you. A ton of arrows that I've already emptied out several times. And of course, all the extra bits and pieces. Do not underestimate how much gold that you can get by smelting the gold armor down. If you are currently not smelting gold in your skeleton farm, then you are missing out. Another farm that you can add that's very easy and compact is a little lava farm so that you never have to worry about fuel. Another thing that I like adding to my farms is a trash compactor so that when you've taken out all the stuff that you care to use and you've got all the junk left over, you could easily get rid of it. If that happens to be a build that you are interested in learning how to do, it's very easy, then let me know in the comments and I can do a future video on it. And while I'm in the neighborhood, I might as well come over here and clean things up a little bit and grab a little bit of extra XP. Oh, that's so satisfying. All right, so now as promised, I'm going to show you how to absolutely maximize a skeleton spawner farm like this and put all of those bones to extremely good use. Meet my friends, the farmers. The farmer villagers will be your best friends if you have a skeleton farm. What I've done up here is set up an automated micro farm. This is where we're gonna put all those bones to good use because we are gonna need lots and lots of bone meal to feed the dispensers in this farm. So I will give you a sneak peek at how it works. Actually, you know what? I think I am not gonna use carrots because that chest is overflowing. So let me grab some potatoes because I've got a few empty spots in there. As you can probably tell by the chess, overpowered is an understatement. All right, so here's the input for the dispensers that I told you about, where we will put all of that beautiful bone meal to good, good use. I'll flip the lever on here. It will activate the piston, and you aim it just right, and you hold down the key to plant the potatoes, and the rest, as they say, is history. That is a whole lot of taters in a very short amount of time. All right, now check out how sick this is. If you, if you get them down to the zombie discounted trade amount, you literally can get an entire stack of emeralds from one round of trades and a whole heck of a lot of XP. Not to mention the fact that these guys sell the golden carrots and it is a most excellent source of food. So you're getting XP, you're getting emeralds, you're getting food, for basically no effort. Call me crazy, but I'd say this is just a little bit better than a plain Jane, standard cobblestone, skeleton spawner, and nothing else sort of farm. And in case you were curious, over here is where I set up a little villager breeder. This all started with two zombie villagers that I was able to rescue from the caves, and I transported over here for breeding. I thought this was kind of cool. I hooked up a lever so that it was easy to turn breeding on and off. So my redstone might be limited, but I know just enough to do a couple fun little things anyway. Definitely turning that back off. Okay, not gonna lie. There's nothing pretty about this. It's very crude, very ugly, and it's been very used. But it works. So anyway, this is where the villagers drop down to, and I've got my little zombie curing station over here. Definitely has to be set up a little nicer, but like I said, it's functional. 
I send the villagers over here where we set up a workstation and they can decide to become gainfully employed instead of leeching off everybody else around them. Then with the push of a button I can send them to the next destination. Normally it would actually be going over to where the zombie doctor is. But for this example we will spare him and send him back to safety. Another thing that you could look for around your farm is to see if there are any slime chunks because you could actually dig out a good portion of a slime chunk and maybe get a little slime farm action going as well. Oh, well, apparently I have a little impromptu glow squid farm as well. So I will flip on the light to turn off the skeleton spawner so I can hop in there and grab myself a couple of glow ink sacks. Well, that was a nice little unexpected bonus. If you've managed to get any good tips out of this, I hope you'll give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you liked this video, then check out this video. I think you'll like it as well.